Hi guys, so I'm going to talk you through facilitated diffusion today, what to look out for in the exam and how you can get the best marks possible and master this topic. So stay tuned guys. Okay guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about facilitated diffusion. I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks you need to get the top grades possible in your A-level biology exams. So facilitated diffusion, let's make a start on that. It's all about the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration across a semi-permeable membrane, or I, I like to use the term partially permeable membrane or selectively permeable membrane, through a channel or carrier protein. Now, this process always occurs across a membrane. So it's not just happening in the air like with simple diffusion or in the water. It's a passive process, which it does have in common with simple diffusion, which means that it doesn't require energy, which is gained from the hydrolysis of ATP. Now, if we look at the term hydrolysis, it's hydrolysis, which means splitting of water. So we split ATP using water to release a small, manageable packet of energy in a single step reaction. Now, why do we need facilitated diffusion anyway? Some substances, which are those like large or polar substances, meaning they have a charge, either can't cross the phospholipid membrane directly, or they do it at such a slow rate, it requires a large amount of time for that molecule to get across the membrane and get involved in metabolic reactions. We need substrates in our reactions as quickly as possible so that we can sustain cellular processes such as DNA replication, cell division, or active transport. Now, the center of the cell membrane is hydrophobic. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically, it's water fearing. So again, hydro meaning water, phobic meaning phobia or fear. Now, what we're talking about here is the fact that this hydrophobic region will actually repel polar molecules. Now, the ions we're talking about are those like sodium, potassium or chloride ions, and they can dissolve in water which means the hydrophobic nature of the saturated or unsaturated fatty acids is going to repel them. So to get around this, we've evolved to have specific complementary carrier or channel proteins in our membrane. Now make sure you know that they're specific and complementary to the substance being transported. So by that I mean sodium's got its own specific and complementary channel, Potassium's got its own specific and complementary channel, and chloride ions also have their own specific and complementary channel. Moving along. So how do carrier proteins work, first of all? Well, I've shown you a little diagram here showing carrier proteins. They look almost like a, a trap door, if you will. And basically, the way these work is that a molecule will bind to them, they'll attach to the carrier protein, then this is going to undergo a conformational change in the protein shape. Now, once that conformational change has happened, as you can see here with the trap door, it's almost going to snap shut, okay? And then we're going to have the molecule on the opposite side of the cell membrane. So by changing shape, the carrier protein is going to move the molecule from inside the cell in the cytosol where there's a region of high concentration to outside the cell in the extracellular fluid where there's a region of low concentration. Now I've put a little note at the bottom so remember it is always from a high concentration down to a low concentration. Now channel proteins on the other hand form pores that go directly through the phospholipid bilayer. Think about the pores in your face. That's where the term pore comes from. Think about porous rocks, meaning it's got holes within its structure. Now this is going to allow charged particles to pass through because they'll be able to get around that repelling force 
of the fatty acids of the phospholipids. Now remember phospholipids have a phosphate head represented by the red circle you can see in this diagram and that region is water soluble and the fatty acids or the the fatty acid tails of the phospholipid are hydrophobic that's why they're pointing into the middle because the fluid around the cell and the fluid within the cell is is water-based it's what we call aqueous aqua meaning water now there are different channel proteins for different substances remember again because the a-level biology exams love their key terminology that they are specific and complementary now a key example of this is with aquaporins so water pores they're going to enable us to transport water because as we've looked at in previous videos water is a charged molecule it's got a negatively charged oxygen and a positively charged hydrogen now factors that affect the rate of facilitated diffusion include the concentration gradient so the higher the concentration gradient the faster the rate of facilitated diffusion can occur and we can see in this diagram here that we've got a nice high concentration in the extracellular fluid and a low concentration in the cytoplasm so these molecules which look a little a little bit like glucose i would say because it's got six sides to the shape they're hexagonal they're going to move from the extracellular fluid through the protein channel into the cytoplasm now it can go either way it depends on the the needs of the cell and what the concentration gradient may be but in this example we could think of the lumen of the intestines where we'd have you know some some food and here we could imagine the inside of a cell now it's a little bit different with that it's co-transport I'm going to produce another video on it and go into the nuance of that topic as well. Now, the other thing is carrier and channel availability. So I'm just going to move myself out of the way and we're going to have a look here. Now, the more carrier or channel proteins available, the faster the diffusion, facilitated diffusion, will be able to occur. And I like to give the example of imagine a large group of people in a room, a large group of students in a classroom. If there was only one door and they needed to get out of the room, for example, for lunchtime, they'd be limited by the amount of people that can fit through the door at one time. Now, if you had multiple doors, that would speed up the amount of students that could exit the room per second. Now, let's finish with an exam question. Because you've learned the content, hopefully that's made a lot of sense to you. Now, what we need to do is learn how to apply it to get you those grades. So this is a describe question. So really we're just gonna state or give, give kind of a step-by-step -step play of how substances move across cell surface membranes by facilitated diffusion. Now it's worth three marks, so we wanna be including around three points. So point number one is that it will occur through a carrier or channel protein. Now, that's how the substance moves across the cell surface membrane. It's through a carrier or channel protein. And we can see our semicolon there, which is going to denote the end of that mark point. Now for the second mark, we're going to talk about how the protein is specific and complementary to the substance. So that's why I kind of banged on about it earlier because I've, I've read the specification, I've looked at mark schemes, and it tends to come up whenever a protein you know, is being asked about, or at least it does frequently. Now the third and final mark point is going to be for the substance moving down a concentration gradient. And if you're a year two student, you'll have looked at electrochemical gradients in things like respiration. Okay guys, that's facilitated diffusion covered. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll produce more content. And drop down in the comments what other videos you would like to see to help you on your journey to get the best results possible. Take care, guys.